Right, I'm showing you the orchard in its pre-spring cleaning phase. What you're looking at is meant to be a path. So I'll be shoveling the neighbour's building works, creating a new dwelling at the back of their place, which is great. Showing the wealth. And what you're also hearing are some fairy wrens who make the orchard their home. Probably looking for nesting material and some chickens scratching out. I'll just wet. So the chickens are locked out for spring and summer out of the orchard um, to give the fruit trees and the ground a bit of a break. As you can see they've dug it over quite well through winter and hopefully eaten any codling moth larvae for the apples. Um, yeah, so I'll be digging out these paths uh, following the water hose there and checking where the water flow goes so that when we get spring or summer storms hopefully and a big downpour the water can be slowed and soak in to the orchard instead of running through the orchard into my neighbours. Um, I'll be barrowing some mulch to put around wood chip mulch to put around the trees and cutting off those suckers at the base of the plum general maintenance stuff um, and hoping a lot of fungal growth happens underneath to feed the fruit trees they're just starting to bud and flower as you can see the almond down the bottom starting to flower and the plum the apricot's just flowering now. Uh, this plum will flower, it's a late season greengage, so that will flower later. Um, so hopefully the chickens have eaten the codling moth larvae under the apple tree uh, there, which is just starting to bud swell. And we'll see how we go. But the chickens locked out now till next winter or at least autumn. I'll show you another video when I've done all the digging. Bye. Okay, so part two. Um, so the idea is that the water flows in a big um, downpour, through, flows down through this sort of catchment system through to here. And either over that or around this way into the orchard. So um, what you can see compared to before is that I've dug, started to dig the path. And um, so it's quite moist. This is the scrapings from the chook pen. It's scraped down. So I've started to dig the path, pile it up on the fig tree bed. So basically rebuilding the beds that have been scratched away by the chickens. And then from this angle, I'm starting to dig the um, pits for water to sit and soak. Um, in a downpour, um, there above the fruit tree, mm -hmm. there's a little fairy wren on the apple tree there. Um, so the water sits and soaks into the pit, uh, there above the fruit tree bed, which I'm building up there. And I know um, where I am because of the rice husk mulch I used last. Uh, summer season. So I just dig down to that. Um, this is the light brown stuff you can see in the middle there. And dig down to that, pile that up on the bed above the apple tree in this case. And then I'll plant some flowers, maybe some lucent seeds into that loose mix. 
and that when the rain comes, it will come down, soak, seep through to the apple tree. And I'll continue that all the way down the orchard path, sort of in a zigzag, uh, switchback sort of style. So where if we get a really big downpour, which I doubt, but sometimes we do, if we get, say, 20 mil in one episode, we get a lot of soaking, it'll overflow, flow down to the next pit, and then zigzag its way down the orchard to the bottom. At least that's the idea. Um, it does work, um, well, depending on rainfall. And as you can see, I've also got supplemental water here, and sometimes I'll put a sprinkler on as well, depending on the season and our water access. So that's my job for spring in the orchard. So just by way of demonstration before the light fades, uh, this is runoff from the garden bed just above the gate. Um, you can see that it's seeping its way down through the, holding itself into the cut paths which are above the beds so you know if we had no water problems we could let this run and it would fill up each pit as we move down the orchard and um, soak in watering the orchard trees. <laughs> 